Hello, this is Alex from MidiSequencing.com, and today we're looking at making some really big drum sounds inspired by Bill Collins in the air tonight. So this is what I made for you. Alright, the basic idea is you take some drums, you add a lot of reverb, and then you compress them together. You really compress the crap out of them and glue the reverb onto the drum sound. I'm going to play this one more time for you real quick, and then I'm going to take away all the plugins so you can see what the raw drums sound like. And if I take everything away, this is what the raw drums sound like. This is just a normal kit. There's nothing really special about it. I, I mixed it a little bit, but I also added uh, a white noise burst that comes that is triggered by the snare. Cool. So the first thing we're going to add is reverb. This reverb was sampled from a device called the AMS RMX 16. And how this came about was they, this company, AMS, they loved the Phil Collins reverb sound so much that they actually tried to make, make it in a machine. And this came out in the early 80s, I think like 81. And the reverb you want to use is the Nonlinear Decay 2. Universal Audio actually makes a version of this as well, and you can get the same type sound out of it there. So this is what it sounds like when we add the reverb. No reverb. Reverb. Cool. The console that they recorded this on uh, was an SSL console, and this was like vital to making this sound. So uh, this record was produced by um, Hugh Patcham. I don't know how you say his name. Hugh P-A-D-G-H-A-M, but uh, they were actually doing a Peter Gabriel album, and the SSL consoles, they have... Uh, a room mic that is just so the musicians can talk to the people in the so they can talk to the people in the control room and Hugh noticed that the drums sounded amazing going through this this mic it's one mic and it's really compressed the crap so he thought he would do the same thing on uh, Phil's drums and then to add a bit of uh, secret sauce they added a gate on it so this is what it sounds like with the SSL on. I'm going to turn it off first and then I'll turn it on so you can see the difference. So the compressor up here, and it's really making the reverb and the drums blend together into one sound, really. What the gate does is the gate sucks the sound away as it closes. So when these lights are on, that means that the sound is not getting through. And when it's off, the sound is coming out. So I'm going to turn the gate on and off and listen to how the sound gets sucked away. You'll really hear it on the snare and the kicks, so I'm going to toggle it on and off now.
And if I turn the release up to the fastest it can go, it's really going to suck away this sound really fast, and you'll really be able to hear the difference it makes. And the point of the gate is it adds a lot of space for the music between the drums. When the drums when the drums come in, they're huge, and then when they leave, there's a bunch of space for the music. It makes for a really impactful sound. It's really cool. And this is basically the overview of the Phil Collins drum sound. Um, I added next a decapitator to really add some analog warmth and distortion on top. Um, I'll play it without it, and then I'll add it in so you can hear the difference. I love this decapitator. Everybody loves the decapitator. It's all over Nine Inch Nails stuff. It's on a bunch of things. Um, I recently wrote an article on midi-sequencing.com called How to Build a Studio from Nothing to Everything, and I talk about a bunch of this gear. Uh, so if you're just starting out or if you're you know, midway through or whatever, it, it goes from just having a dot all the way up to the highest end stuff. So it really gives you an overview of all the gear that we would use as a studio people, as music makers. So check that out. Lastly, what I added is the SSL bus compressor. And I'll turn it, start with it off and turn it on so you can hear the difference. A lot of companies make a version of the SSL bus compressor. It's like an awesome thing to put on your drum bus. Um, there's one called the Glue. Ableton has their own built-in one. It really ties the room together. It's such a good thing overall. So I'm going to play it one more time raw without anything in, and then I'll add everything back in so you can get an idea of, of the journey we made here. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please come by midisequencing.com for a bunch of articles and gear reviews, tutorials, all that stuff. Please like and subscribe. Peace.